So, a warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this uh, series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. We were talking about the probability of error for a communication system and we had seen that the probability of error given that AM is transmitted equals the probability that the received symbol Y minus AM is greater than the distance y minus a m is greater than y minus a n sum n not equal to m this or if I look at it uh, from the point of view of uh, so in other words if we let us look at uh, the QAM figure again or QPSK figure again. Look at this figure. So, now taking this as an example, I can say that say without the loss of generality since this is a symmetric constellation. So, let m equal to 1. So, in that case all the points that are so here black so we note that, that all the points if we look at uh, the distance criterion that uh, we have defined all the points that lie within the black lines correspond to points that are nearest to a m or that will be classified as a m. Everything else will be classified as a m. So, I can say that for the mth transmitted point, I can divide the space into two regions T m and D m complement such that D m intersection D m complement is the null set and D m D m or partition is the n dimensional space that I am interested in fine. So, I can divide the entire space into these two regions. Now, keeping this in mind I can write probability of error given a m was sent as probability that y lies outside the decision boundary or y outside lies outside given a m or this is integral pi n naught to the power n considering complex vectors or everything to be a complex random variable a to the power x minus Y. This vector, this piece, fine. So, this will be the integral that we want to evaluate. Now, the point is that uh, this integral is slightly hard to evaluate because uh, even in two dimensions, we see that 
और इवन इन वन डायमेंशन द रीजन डीएम कॉम्प्लीमेंट बिकम्स हार्ड टू डिस्क्राइब Even in one dimension, the region DM complement becomes hard to describe. So, this integral is slightly hard to evaluate. We are slightly hard pressed to evaluate this integral. So, how do we do this? To answer that, let us look at this figure again. And let us. just say that this is m this is n1 this is n2 this is n3 this is n4 and so on this is n7 for 8 psk so we can say that let me consider another constellation just containing am and a n1 so just these two points so in that case if i consider just these two points i can say that all the points that are closest to so yes so just these two points we'll consider so then then all the points closest to m lie below the red, red line and all the points closest to n1 lie above the red line fine all the points closest to m lie below the red line and all the points so i can say that this is dm n1 and this is dm n1 complement fine and divide it into dm n1 and dm n1 complement that is one now let me consider similarly consider n2 so in that case consider a black line so for m and n2 everything above the black line is m and below the black line is n1 so those are the points nearest to n1 and n1 to satisfy our criterion similarly for say consider one more example purple will do n7 not n2 n7 for n2 m and n2 i can say that for m and n2 the same thing is above and below the purple line so here i say that d m n2 prime and d m n2 black is seven and d m n7 so one thing i can see is that d m prime equals it's already visible but d m1 prime or mn1 prime union d 2 prime union d 7 so this i can consequently 
describe this as integral over d m n complement over n complement over sorry this complement this is uh, over all n not equal to m fine union over all n not equal to m 2 power n minus n not sorry this is the norm square d y this so we can describe it uh, the region that we want to integrate over as a union. So, but uh, how does this help us? So, since this is a union and this is a probability over a union, so we can say that I just let me copy that last result and copy, I will paste it here. So, this from the basic axioms of probability, this is less than or equal to summation. So, this is a union of probability or union of events whose probability will necessarily be less than or equal to the summation over all these events. So, n not equal to m integral d complement and not to the power n power y minus by n not dy this so what we have done is so this actually this indicates the probability of a m being sent and a n being detected instead and is called the pairwise error probability and is called the pairwise error probability. This is equal to given as n not equal to m probability that a m is detected as a n probability that a m is detected as a n. So, this is called the pairwise error probability or in other words this is known as the PEP fine. So, now let us try to evaluate the pairwise error probability of uh, in this case. So, in this case if we want to evaluate the pairwise error probability integral or n minus y minus fine. So, this is the integral, but uh, this still does not uh, make sense make much sense actually because uh, we still have this uh, as a multidimensional integral that uh, needs to be solved or that uh, requires more work. So, let us say that or so let us simplify this to a one dimensional case 
let us simplify this to a one dimensional case or let us look at look at d m n con this let us look at this. So, d equals or d m n is defined as the set of all x such that x minus a n is less than or equal to x minus the square is not needed this fine. So, if a m and a n if x and uh, if a m and a n are two vectors and a n are two vectors in the space then the plane dividing or the plane bisecting bisecting their joining vector is the boundary for d or rather plus a n by 2. So, the plane whose normal vector defined by a m plus a n by 2 is the decision boundary the plane whose normal vector is defined by a m plus a n by 2 is the decision boundary fine. So, this is the general n dimensional case and this is how we do things in the n dimensions. Now, let us look at a one dimensional case. Let us look at a simple one dimensional case where everything is a everything is a real number or since there are just two points actually this is an easier explanation instead of looking at just one dimension. So, we have a plane whose normal vector is given by this. Now, since we just have two points involved can reduce everything to the line joining you can reduce everything to the line joining a m plus a n and projecting this integral to one dimension can write. So, projecting this integral to one dimension, I am skipping a few steps. Probability of equals plus a n by 2 to infinity. Assuming that a m is smaller and a n is larger or the dimension corresponding to a m is smaller and e to the power y minus a m or the point corresponding to a m or the one dimensional projection of a m and say b m everything uh, let us reduce to 
बढ़ने में पी एम प्लस पी एन बाई टू बाई माइनस बी एम बाई इट कैन बी रिड्यूस टू ए रियल वैल्यूड गाउसियन Equals Q of B M minus. Sorry, this N not equals. Sorry, N not is under the root. Yes, N not by two under the root. Q of B M minus. B n by two under the root. This equals Q of d min or d m n by two and not under the root, where d m n indicates the distance. Between, so what I'm basically doing is uh, projecting everything on two because two n-dimensional points can always be projected into a one-dimensional space where they are separated by the same same amount of distance. So the distance between m and n remains unchanged, but the probability or uh, the distance remains unchanged, and uh, the probability of error is actually a function of Their distance, so probability a m is detected as a n equals probability a m minus a n by this. This is the probability that uh, or d. probability of d m n by root 2 n not this piece oh, sorry q of d m n right? or probability of error given equals summation n not equal to m q of t m n by root 2 n not since the function is a decreasing Function of argument. This is less than or equal to m minus one times q of d min by root two n not q of d min by root two n not d min is the minimum. Distance between any two constellation points. D min is the minimum distance between any two constellation points, and the overall probability of error can hence be m minus one d min. Probability of a m equals m minus one q of this beast m minus one d min by root two n not. So this is the overall probability of error.
for uh, or this is or since this is uh, actually this is less than or equal to so this is the union bound on the probability of error the probability of error in any constellation will be always less than or equal to of d min or this uh, gives us a similarly i am not going to prove this but there is a lower bound on the probability of error as well always be equal to 2 actually q not d min by root 2 and not so the probability of error always lies between these two numbers so we naturally see that the probability of error error for a constellation is a function of the minimum distance between any points it is the function of the minimum distance between any two constellation points so let us now revisit so here we see in a psk so psk adding new points decreases the minimum distance between constellation points in PSK adding new points decreases the minimum distance between constellation points hence it uh, dramatically increases the probability of error whereas in pm adding uh, new points actually in psk you are adding the points on the circumference of the same circle if you look at it but uh, in pm you are actually adding more and more points towards the side of the new cons so here are the points so originally have points at minus 1 and 1 you add at minus 3 and 3 then you add points at uh, minus 5 minus 7 plus 5 plus 7 so in this case in pm are only adding on the sides on the side of the older points not affecting the minimum distance not affecting the minimum distance but uh, in PSK when you add points you affect the minimum distance and hence dramatically increase the probability of error so this actually answers the question that uh, we were looking for for the past few lectures that uh, why is the probability of error in PSK increasing much more dramatically as compared to the probability in PM, but uh, this uh, raises another question. So, we actually stop with that, we actually raise, but does this mean that we on adding more and more points in with we can get away with getting better performance at no cost does this mean that if we keep on adding more and more points in pm can we get away by 
at no apparent cost? The answer is obviously a big no. Why? I will just give a hint that E average in PSK was 1. We have seen that uh, E average for PSK for our case was 1 that uh, you are transmitting 1 bit of energy per symbol, but in case of PAM you are actually or the average energy expended by you. So, this is of M PSK if we simplify the expression that we developed previously for the average energy we have developed uh, an expression for the average energy. So, here it is. So, this I can simplify to m square minus 1 by 6. So, here if I write it here then or the average energy spent per symbol increases as the square of the number of symbols that you are transmitting which is uh, kind of obvious when you look at uh, the constellations. But uh, so, you have to spend much more energy in a PAM constellation in order to get uh, this uh, higher spectral efficiency. So, how do the spectral efficiency and the constellation size trade off? We will look at that in the next lecture and uh, we will develop a notion on how to balance the idea of uh, spectral efficiency and uh, energy so that uh, the comparison between constellations remains an apples to apples comparison. So, we will stop with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.